So we are now in week three and our first question for week three's project, um, we're talking about this week, the Pentecostalism movement. So it says, how did the Pentecostalism movement start? Um, let me go back. Yes, that's question number one. So modern Pentecostalism began on January 1st, um, 1901. This was in the 1900s, 19th century. Um, when Agnes Osmond, a student at Charles F. Parham's Bethel Bible School in Topeka, Kansas, spoke in tongues. Um, she didn't just speak in tongues. She spoke in Chinese. This is also in this week's study. So she spoke in Chinese and was unable to speak in her native um, language, which was English, for several days. Not only she spoke in Chinese, but she also wrote in Chinese. And this is a language that she was not familiar with. Like, of course she was familiar with, but she wasn't familiar with as far as speaking it. She never spoke this language before, and she definitely never wrote this language. Because speaking in Chinese, and everybody knows speaking is very different than writing, so you can obviously see that this was the Holy Spirit um, at work in her life. So the and the origins of the Pentecostalism trace to the Wesleyan inspired holiness movement of the 19th century, which is also what we um, read about um, in this week's um, studies. So which pursued Christians perfection through entire sanctification and experienced subsequent salvation that was said to enable Christians to live a sinless life. <clears throat> When I read about this, it really got to me because the other day I was telling my brothers and sisters, um, I was preaching to them. I was like, I don't know, I just felt this thing, like the, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, how we can live a sinless life on earth. And I began to preach to them and tell them how, like, if we have the Holy Spirit and fully subject and immerse ourselves in Christ, that we can go um, in this life sin free. Because God has no limitations and to a person. And yes, I also did read about what the other person said. I forget his name. But he was talking about um, their theology. How they were talking about how that's for the next life to come. For us to live in sin, um, free life. Which that is most definitely true. And I'm not like really that, um, I say, experienced or knowledgeable as far as right now. Because I haven't done my thorough studies on that. Um but for the most part, I was saying how it is possible. Um, I believe in the Holy Spirit um, gave me this revelation about how you can attain a sin-free life in this earth. And if you really want to be real, Apostle Paul did it. You know, saw completely wicked, evil, killing Christians, going around, doing whatever you wanted to do. He met Christ. His name got changed to Paul and he lived for God. Um, but that's another story for another time. So, number two, how did it grow? The Pentecostal movement grew. Um, so, it was inspired by Acts of the Apostles, um, chapter 2, verse 1 through 13, which speaks of God pouring out his spirit in the last days, which also is called the Pentecostal, the day of Pentecost. Um, many Pentecostals believe that their revival is a sign of the end times and hence a call to bring the world to salvation before the second coming of Christ. So it all started um, in the book of Acts, and that's how it grew. And it's continued to grow for nations and countries and city and people all around are experiencing the Holy Spirit at his full capacity. Um, number three, it says, explain in which way. The history of the Pentecostal movement affected you and why? The history of the Pentecostal movement affected me because I'm a witness of it. You know, I witness so much things that the Holy Spirit um, is doing in my life and doing in other people's lives. Um, like the gifts, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's just amazing. And, and the, the Holy Spirit residing in me and he's just convicting me. He constantly convicts me and gives me new revelation. And he tells me, you know, if I'm wrong, go apologize. He just works in me. And not only I receive the fruit of the spirit, but I receive the many fruits that comes with the fruit of the spirit. So he's um, affected my life in so many ways that I um, understand and I don't understand. But I thank God that I'm trusting in him um, to continue to move in my life the way he is. The Holy Spirit is at work. And uh, I see people getting healed. I see people, um, prophecies being told, you know, like 
uh, the gift of prophesying. And I see these prophecies be, um, coming true. So that's one way that is affecting me. I'm seeing these miraculous works that the Holy Spirit is doing. And um, it's affecting me because it's just expanding and broadening my, my mind. It's enlightening me to take that step closer with Christ and actually um, do what he has called me to do and be who he has called me to be so I can hop on um, this wild, um, exciting journey of Christ. Also, number four, it says, explain if you believe or not, every Christian should move or should live in the Pentecostal way. Yes, every Christian should um, live in the Pentecostal way. I think this is very important because um, it's a charismatic Christian movement that emphasizes direct personal experience of God through the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Every single body should live that way because every single body needs to experience the Holy Spirit at his full capacity and experience God in order to do that is to receive his spirit to come and rest upon us. Um, God says our hearts are less restless until we rest in him. So it's very important that we do that um, as well. And number five, share one fact that you believe everyone should know about the Pentecostal, the Pentecostalism. I'm just saying yes. So one fact is... Um, the gifts, the charismatic gifts, um, which is the word of knowledge. This can be found in First Corinthians. Um, increased faith, the gifts of healing, the gifts of miracles, prophecy, the discernment of gifts, um, diverse kinds of tongues, and interpretation of the tongues. This is what everybody should know, that when you have the Holy Spirit, you receive gifts, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Does not Just because you don't receive these gifts does not mean that you do not have the Holy Spirit. But in due time, the more you grow in Christ and grow in your faith, you will receive um, certain gifts um, of the Holy Spirit. So that's pretty much um, just a little bit of the Pentecostal movement. It does go way beyond, you know, just seven or eight minute video. But I'm telling you, God is at work in our lives. And it's just so amazing how we get to witness, we're eyewitnesses um, in our personal experience.